Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where because of a little bit of jankiness with the way that I interpreted some of this we actually have a little bit of a problem at this point. Now is the time to launch the Nauka module which is this and we've got the European robotic arm on here already as well. So the problem here is we already lifted this right but we need to do a proton launch and I'm going to do that anyway. We're just going to send a proton launch on up here, and that should be absolutely fine. So let's hop out to the space center, and are we going to bring anything along with on this proton launch? Do we feel like we need anything? Well, we're going to do a proton launch here, and then it looks like there are three Soyuz flights in a row. Okay. I don't think that we actually need anything on the proton launch. Maybe we skip it. But I kind of want to do a proton launch just because it's kind of rare. Right? It's been a while since we've done a proton launch. And it doesn't happen all that frequently for, for this particular series anyway. I believe protons are used pretty regularly for like uncrewed resupply missions. But we don't have to do that. This is KSP. So let's just load up a proton here and let's do a quick proton launch. We're just going to dock it up and we're going to treat this like it's a... We have nothing in this module. Okay. <laughs> nothing in this at all. We're just going to treat this like it is a resupply mission. So I think what we're going to do here... This is the second stage. Yeah, this is our first... Well, this is kind of our first stage here. And then our second stage is up here. This would be our actual spacecraft. And this is the fairing we have to work with. So we're just going to bring some like container modules and things like that. This is a Clampatron docking port here. I'm just going to flip that around. And we're going to put in something along the lines of a remote guidance unit. What do we have right now for that? I don't think we have anything that's like supposed to be part of the payload. I'm pretty sure. So let's just build ourselves a resupply mission here really quickly. We can toss in a like a 2.5 meter service bay. Is that too big? No, it isn't. Okay, so 2.5 meter would be reasonably fine. We can have this have a small engine on it or perhaps like, I'm, I'm just thinking about how we'll want to do this. Do we want to recover this module at all either? Do we want it to be fully expended? That's something we're going to have to decide. I think for the moment, I'm just going to slap on a very, very small engine here. Something along the lines of a terrier. So that'll go about there. And then I'm going to have a fuel tank here. But I want this to be like a fuel tank adapter, right? I want the size to adapt from something like this. We have a lot of height leeway here right so that'll be okay we can do something along the lines of that then up top we're definitely going to need some power generation i'm going to use these guys that'll be okay and i think we're going to expend this flight uh, maybe we'll try to recover a little bit of it so we'll just do something kind of like this for our solar panels those do clip out a little bit so i would like to move them in ever so slightly here That'll do. That is no longer sticking out of the fairing. So this is kind of a, like, unpressurized service bay, right? So that'll work for unpressurized cargo. But what about pressurized cargo? We need some form of, of pressurized cargo here. So we could definitely do that. We could have something along the lines of a hitchhiker storage container for, for cargo here. We may want to have a decoupler here and, and bring back the pressurized section. Just in case this were to be, you know, crude. This is not designed to be crude. This is, this is going to be, like, pressure pressure cargo only. But if, they, if it were for some reason, we'd want to have a decoupler here and a heat shield. So this is going to be a 2.5 meter heat shield like that. And then this will return like so. We're going to want possibly some sort of RCS on here. That would be a useful thing for sure. The RCS could maybe be in the unpressurized section here, though. So that would be okay. We could definitely put in a monoprop tank here. That's... Should we put a monoprop tank down here? So that would end up being, like, this size of monoprop tank. 120 monoprop is probably sufficient. So we could put that there, like this, and I think the fuel will still flow through there. So that should be reasonably fine. 
then the pressurized section is up here and we would need some form of a remote guidance unit. So I think a large remote guidance unit is about the right size. Something like that. That should do. And then we would just need a Clampatron docking port up on top and then a couple of parachutes to bring this thing down. Nothing too fancy here. So a Clampatron docking port. Do we want a docking port junior or a docking port? I think we're going to dock this to the Nauka module. So I believe that means a docking port junior. Regardless, we'll dock it up somewhere. We might want to have a little bit of extra space here. So I'm going to put in a mod modular girder segment here just to give us a little bit more room or maybe a modular girder adapter. Yeah, a modular girder adapter should be reasonably fine. And then a Clampatron docking port junior, just like that. Okay, that seems reasonably good. I'm going to put in quad struts here to make this less bendy, but it's probably still going to bend. Okay, so something along the lines of that. Now, this engine here, yeah, that has 687 meters per second. This is going to need to be moved down like this. Okay, we need to definitely do our staging. That is for sure. But I do want to put a couple of parachutes on here. So I'm going to put on a drogue chute, or actually a pair of drogue chutes, and a pair of main chutes. So under utility, we are going to grab a pair of radial mount parachutes. I'm going to put those here for recovering our pressurized section. And then our drogue chutes. That should be sufficient, in theory. If it breaks up, I'm not too concerned. Okay, so let's check our staging. This obviously is going to need some work. So we've got all of this going on. That is all good. No problem there. These chutes are absolutely going to need to be split out here. So radial mount parachutes are going to go here. Radial mount drogue chutes are going to go here. This is separating out all of our side strap-on boosters. That's all fine. This should be our second stage. Yes. This should be our third stage. And what is this engine? So we've got that terrier there. What is this poodle? Where is this? It's pointing me to like right here. I don't think, oh, there is a, this is a poodle. Okay, never mind. So this is a second stage, this is a third stage. <laughs> We're gonna have way more fuel than we need. Okay, in that case, we may actually want to... Mm, no, I think this is reasonably fine. I think we're going to leave this as is. I, I was going to say maybe we take this fuel out and just operate on this. I think it's okay. We'll have extra fuel, but that's fine. I'm not too concerned about that. This thing's going to be a little expensive, but no major problem there. Okay, last staging check. Let's just go through this really quickly here. So this will be second stage. So what we need here is for this poodle and this decoupler to be here. Then third stage. And then this, of course, would be manually decoupled. It bears noting that we have no decoupler here. So we should probably have one. I'm going to ditch this setup here and we're going to have a decoupler here instead. So we're going to go to a TD25 because that's going to cause us problems. And we'll just do something about like that. That should work much better. So that TD25 is here. Okay, we're going to need to split this out. This TD25 goes here and this terrier goes here. Where is, what is this decoupler? Why is this in this stage? This should not be in this stage. Hang on a moment. That's this decoupler. Okay, that needs to happen here. I think our staging is correct now. Let's just make absolutely certain of that. So now we should be on our second stage. Now our third stage. Now our spacecraft. That is our re-entry. Yes, that all looks good. Okay, we are ready to launch this thing. Let's save it and we're going to put it out on the pad. But what pad are we going to put it on? We're going to put it on Woomerang. We're going to be launching it from Woomerang. So let's get into position for that. Of course, we're going to MechJeb launch this to make things a little bit easier, but we're still going to need an inclination correction, almost certainly. 
This is going to be a less complicated procedure than our Falcon 9, of course. And we will have a couple more Falcon 9 flights still. So that'll be absolutely fine. Keep in mind, of course, SpaceX also had a hard time recovering that first stage at first, but we've proven that it's possible. It's just a matter of practice. At this point, they've had hundreds of times to try it, and uh, I've had like half a dozen, <laughs> so that's fine. Uh, this is a very safe place to put it on the pad. I like it. Okay, so that's absolutely fine. We're not too concerned about it as long as we don't fall off the pad after the time warp. We'll see what happens with that one. So I want to launch into plane of target, launching in about 45 minutes. Okay, that seems fine. We're not going to skip circularization, and corrective steering is allowed. I'll manually stage, though. So let's engage autopilot, and we're going to warp on forward. Cool. Orbital altitude, hang on. Doesn't need to be 422 kilometers. Let's set that down to 300. Okay. So that should be reasonably fine. We have no probe control. Hang on. So we can't actually launch here. <laughs> We're going to revert this back. We are lacking... Is this power? Yeah, our problem is power. Okay, I'm going to revert that back, and we just need to put on a launch tower to provide that power. We warped forward, and that drained all of our batteries, but that is indicative of the fact that we don't have much for batteries. So that is definitely something we should work on. I'm going to grab, like, a 2.5k rechargeable battery pack here. That'll be absolutely fine. That should, that should hold us. We shouldn't need any sort of a launch tower. But I'm still going to do a launch stability enhancer. And we're going to put that in somewhere around here or so. I don't like how that clips. You know what? We probably don't need it with that battery. So let's put this back on Woomerang. And let's try this again. <laughs> this time with electric charge. That should be absolutely fine. We weren't going to be able to take off without the electric charge, I don't think. Our engines have alternators on it, but that was just indicative that we didn't have enough battery power, right? So we should have plenty of battery power to last until takeoff, and then the engines will recharge our battery until we get into orbit, at which point we'll be able to deploy our solar panels, and we should have no problem at all. Cool. So that'll all be relatively fine. We'll try this again. And we'll take this up to about 300 kilometers. Yep, this is all retaining the correct information. I don't think that we have our target set, though. No, we do not. So we'll launch into plane of target and engage that autopilot again. So now we can see our electric charge slowly draining away. Actually, not all that slowly. This is why we ran out of electric charge previously, for the record. And that's okay. We have a plan to deal with it now. So that is all absolutely fine. We're going to be launching in about 10 seconds here. We are currently not falling off of the pad, so that's a good sign. And let's just get zoomed out a little bit here. I want to keep an eye on burn times because we're not auto-staging. I'm going to be manually staging these. And off we go. Beautiful. Roll to Azimuth is commencing. Yep. That looks about right. Fantastic. I feel like we're probably actually kind of in a decent time period. Well, no, we're going to be a little behind the station, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We're a little too late right now to have a good window to launch to the ISS directly. We don't actually care about that, though. That's not that big of a deal. So that'll be fine. We are going to just continue to burn here with these side boosters for about another minute. A little bit low th feeling thrust to weight, but that's fine. Our core, of course, is not draining any fuel right now. We are draining fuel just from these outer boosters, and that seems absolutely phenomenal. This sort of a classic rocket design, I like a lot, to be clear. It's kind of weird the way it tapers down and then has these strap-on boosters. That creates some odd sort of aerodynamics for us, and some potential wiggling after we ditch these tanks, but I do like it. This design is, I think, a really cool one. So we've got about 30 seconds until our booster detachment. That all looks fine. Fuel is, of course, draining on out of there. 
and we're just slowly gravity turning on over. We can see that we have about 500 meters per second, almost 600 meters per second vertically. Horizontally is about 300. Most of our speed is still going into horizontal at this moment. Our apoapsis is about 50 kilometers. So that's all looking fine. And we're going to be ditching these boosters shortly. 10 seconds. And that is definitely proceeding nicely. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, mark. Goodbye, boosters. Yeah, they, they blow themselves up a little bit. You can see that we, as I said, get a fair amount of wiggling going on here. I'm going to turn down our gimbal limit to about 33 to try to limit that. But yeah, that's not shocking. Are we losing attitude here or are we intending to try to do this? Is this intentional, Mechjeb? It is not. Okay, I'm turning that gimbal limit back up. I'm getting rid of our fairing. You can see the amount of bending that we have going on here. This is why we're having issues. Okay. Noted. This rolling is actually quite bad. I'm trying to counteract it here. And I'm realizing I didn't actually put any RCS boosters on this. <laughs> or any RCS thrusters, rather. I mean, that's fine. It'll make things kind of awkward for us, but sure. So, I mean, we're out of the atmosphere now. And this stage is going to be getting rid of very soon. This is a problem. But it should be fine. Okay. We were spinning like a bit of a top there, but it should get under control here. So now that we have that gotten rid of, it should be much less bendy, and that should be a very, very good thing. As you can see, we have a whole lot of... And actually, I'm not sure if we have fuel flow through here. Now that I look at this, this is saying zero seconds of burn time. Okay, this might be a deeply flawed design, but that's okay. We only need to launch it once, and all we got to do is get it docked up and then head home. So it's fine. It's, it's definitely a deeply flawed design. There's no doubt about that. We need to, if, if we were going to fly this regularly, we would need to do something about this situation. A fuel line would fix that. We would need to do something about the spinning, which is actually not that big of a deal, I suppose. I mean, we have a reaction wheel in this, so it should be reasonably fine. We are working on counteracting that spin. And that is actually getting under control. So we're in an okay situation here. We'll make orbit and we'll be able to get docked up, but we're not going to be able to utilize this to its fullest. That's okay. We've got plenty of extra Delta V. This will be fine. I would address a few things if we were going to use this more frequently for sure. Like being able to use this engine would be nice. I assumed that fuel would be able to flow through this monoprop tank, but apparently not. That's good to know. That's absolutely fine as well. We've got more than enough fuel to get there. Like, way more than enough. So that's all looking good. We'll just make our way up to the station, dock it up, bring this guy home, and call it a day. We'll, we'll just need to, you know, get our quote-unquote cargo unloaded. <laughs> okay, so that's, I think, corrective steering happening there. We're still working on pushing up our periapsis here. 3.2 degrees on the descending node. That's not too bad. Although it's actually getting worse right now. Thanks for that, Mechjeb. Cool. But we can see time to apoapsis is going up. So despite the issues that we had on ascent and with design of this thing, it's actually working fine. This will be okay. We'll, we'll get there. No actual problems here. We have so much fuel in this that it doesn't matter. We'll be able to transfer this fuel down here as well. In fact, we could transfer it now into this tank, but I don't think there's a point. I would rather burn the fuel out of this tank and ditch this and just dock up with this. That would be my preferred way to do this. So at this point, our apoapsis height is sitting at about 150. And that, of course, needs to continue to come up, but it will. That'll go very, very quick from here. Our ascending and descending node is definitely not ideal. It is improving, but it's still three degrees off. 
We'll get that fixed with an inclination change as soon as we make orbit here. So I'm going to actually skip circularization. We're going to do a manual circularization. We are in orbit right now. We just need to get our apoapsis up to that 300 marker, and then we'll have to do an inclination change slash circularization. And that'll be absolutely fine. Okay, so there's engine shutdown. Um, there's engine shutdown. And that's okay. So at this point, I want to head over to possibly this descending node, actually, and add in a maneuver here. Yeah, let's do it from the descending node. And I want this to be somewhere around here. It's pretty close to the apoapsis, and we'll be able to also roughly circularize here. So we'll just do something like this, pushing this out a bit, and we'll need to do a little bit of tweaking on our inclination, of course, as we do this. So somewhere around here. Yeah, about like that. So that'll put us into both a circularized orbit-ish and into a perfect inclination. That looks ideal. It's not going to be perfectly circularized, but that's fine. I'm going to ditch this stage here. It's very heavy, and I don't want to keep it with us. So there we go. We're now on this stage, which is actually our final stage because we have no fuel flow here. So we're just going to want to move that fuel, but that's okay. That'll allow us to turn much more quickly which will be useful, of course. As far as docking this thing goes, without RCS, it's going to be interesting, but it'll be doable. So I'm not too concerned about that. We might just have to turn the station just to get it done relatively quickly, but that's okay. Otherwise, we could just do, you know, constant braking, and it, it'll be a whole thing. It's way easier with RCS. But I think we'll just line it up and bring it in, to be honest. Since, since I forgot to put RCS on this, even though I put monoprop on and talked about it, whatever. It's fine. This is a flawed design, but we only need to do this once, so it's, it's fine. We've got 10 seconds until this burn, and the burn is now. So off we go. This is a much more rigid design at this point, so that's good. And then we'll get ourselves heading off to the station. Okay, two, one, zero. Now that's reasonably close. That'll do. So, from here, the question is, what happens if we push from the periapsis and try to get a rendezvous over here? It's quasi-interesting timing. But it's not really all that great. So, really what we probably want to do is get rid of this encounter, or rather, this maneuver and instead do something perhaps down over here. What does this end up looking like? Uh, sure, that's, I guess, reasonably fine. What about over here? That might actually be a better way to go. Yes, I like this better. So that'll end up being about there. 4.3 kilometers apart, we can definitely do something about that. 1.4 is good enough. So let's align to that node. That'll be absolutely fine. Only 75.8 meters per second. I would like to pull some fuel down over here. Of course, that's not going to be our full amount of fuel from this tank, but that's fine. So we'll just do that, just so that we're actually utilizing that fuel. And we have more than enough to get docked up here. No doubt about that. So we're just aligning to this burn. That'll be in about four hours. There we go. The singular reaction wheel is struggling a bit with this weight, but we're going to burn off some of this fuel, so that'll be fine. What's our relative speed going to be? 79.8. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's really not very high at all. Noted. We'll bring it up a bit with some corrective burn, but that's fine. So we are almost in position for this rendezvous burn. 50 seconds here. 40, 30, 20... 10, and 3, 2, 1, 0, mark. So let's get this rendezvous burn going. And I'd like to get the station loaded in this episode, and then I'll just restart between episodes. It just works better that way, I feel like. So let's just get warped on in to about here, and we'll get swapped into target modes. 
and this will be absolutely fine. Now we have a docking port junior here, so we're going, we're going to have to dock up to a docking port junior. That should be absolutely okay. I want to dock it up to the Nauka module, ideally. And where is the st space station? There it is. So 17 kilometers. This is a slow turner. No doubt about that. Let's just orient ourselves somewhere down over here or so. And I'm just going to commence a little bit of a burn as we do some correction here. 0 0.3 kilometers. Okay, that sounds good. Let's move this to relative velocity minus. And we're just going to get in position for that. Beautiful. Slow turns indeed. No doubt about that. We're going to have to burn some additional fuel from this tank. And I do want this fuel to continue to flow out of this tank. But that's looking good. Okay, 90 meters per second. That's fine. We're about 5 kilometers away right now. I'm going to put us in kill rot, and I'm going to do a very, very small correct corrective burn here. About like this. Okay, about there. Relative velocity minus, and we're going to just start slowly turning there. We're going to be loading in the station shortly, so goodbye frame rate. But that is, of course, the point behind doing this at the end of the episode rather than the beginning of next episode, because we'll just inherently have a built-in game restart time then. So that is a very convenient thing. So we'll just head on in here. Goodbye frame rate. The station has loaded, or is loading? I'm not sure if it has... Okay, yep, it has loaded. That is a special frame rate, for sure. And we're just going to warp in to about somewhere around here or so. And I'm just going to commence a little bit of a burn here. I'm not doing too much burning yet. I'm waiting until we get to around 600 meters. Okay, commencing burn. And I'm going to take us down to about 5 meters per second, and next episode we'll dock up and bring this guy home, as well as getting started on our next flight, which is going to be a Soyuz flight. So that'll be absolutely okay. Down to about 5 meters per second. Okay, 3.6. And now it is time to put that cut in. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Kentogan, Ali Lee, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.